Hello everyone and welcome to the second video in the Earth Science Review Series. This is Unit 2, Spheres and Location. So this is my top 10 questions that you should know for the quiz this week. And without further ado, here we go. Number one, compared to the weight of a person at the North Pole, the weight of the same exact person at the equator would be what? So the idea here that you need to know is that the Earth is an oblate spheroid, and that's a horrible circle, so we're going to try to redo that. That's good enough. So essentially, here's the core, and there's a person up here, right, and there's a person over here. The idea is that since the Earth is wider, it's wider than it is tall, this person over here on the left is far away from the center, and this person is close to the center. And if they're close, that means there's higher gravity, which means they have a higher weight. And this person's further away, so there's lower gravity and lower weight. So it looks like the same person at the equator would be slightly less because they are farther away from the center of the Earth. A would be the answer for that one. Number two, which object best represents a true scale model of the shape of the Earth? So even though I just said that the Earth is a oblate spheroid, it's wider than it is tall, pictures from space cannot distinguish that it's wider than it is tall. You, anytime you would see the Earth, you're going to see it as pretty much a perfect sphere. So you're going to pick the one that's the perfect, most perfect sphere. So the ping pong ball would be the right answer. Number three, in which two temperature zones of the atmosphere does temperature increase as you increase your altitude? So for this, we need to know how to use page 14. I think this is 14. Don't quote me on that one. Um, this is the atmosphere chart. So essentially what happens here is this section here, this is the troposphere. The first layer of the atmosphere. This section here is the stratosphere. This section here between the dashed line is the mesosphere and anywhere above that in here this is all the thermosphere. So on that note knowing that the black line is where you get all your information. So from this point here which is the ground would be 15 degrees Celsius to this point right here as we go up this is negative 55 degrees Celsius. So in the troposphere right here in this area, the temperature drops. If we repeat the same thing for the stratosphere, we start here for the stratosphere where the troposphere ended. And as we follow the line, the temperature goes up to zero. So that means that it went from negative 55 to zero, which means it increases in the stratosphere. And the reason for that is because the stratosphere has the ozone layer. And the ozone layer protects us from harmful UV radiation. It stops it. So that's good for us. So starting from the stratopause dot now, going up in the mesosphere, the temperature went back down to negative 90. So it went down in the mesosphere. This is actually the coldest point in the atmosphere, in the mesosphere, negative 90. You see the graph doesn't go any more left then negative 90 on the black line. And then the thermosphere, follow it up, it goes all the way up really, really high. So the pattern is it goes down in the troposphere, up in the stratosphere, down in the mesosphere, and up in the thermosphere in terms of our temperatures. Now, other things to look out for in this on this graph is the kilometers here and the miles. They go up by a different amount. So the miles go up by 5, 5, 10, 15, 20. And this goes up by 10. 20, 30, 40. The pressure graph, just look at the, the line here. Don't worry about the white space. It goes from 1.0 on the ground, and if you follow it up, as you go up in the air, the number approaches zero. So this only goes down. And the water vapor graph is the same. It starts at 40 on the ground, and it, you follow the line, and it gets closer and closer to zero meaning the water vapor content always drops. It doesn't switch back and forth like the, the temperature one. Pressure always goes down as you go up, and water vapor always goes down as you go up. 
And notice right here, there is no water vapor above this point because most of the water vapor is in the troposphere, which is why we have all of our weather down here. So that's pretty much the, the idea of this graph here. So which two temperature zones does the temperature increase with increasing altitude? So if you go back to our chart over here, it looks like the ones that go up are the stratosphere and the thermosphere. So your answer on this one will be C. Cool. Going on. Number four, which pi graph? I really like pi. Which pi graph correctly shows the percentage of elements by volume in the Earth's troposphere? So we're going to use page one for this one. Troposphere, percentage by volume. So it looks like 21% oxygen, 78% nitrogen, and 1% other. So 78% nitrogen, 21% that's A. So you have to use page one. Now just be careful. It said elements by volume. They could switch that out and say they want percent by mass, in which case you would be doing this one. But a good thing to know is if you're talking about the crust, which is the lithosphere, the two most abundant, which means most abundant, a abundant means most, like the most commonly occurring ones, are silicon and oxygen. So that's the most abundant by mass in the crust. That's another popular question. Number five. During the time exposure of the photographs, the stars appear to move through an arc of 120 degrees here. How many hours did this take? So the thing to know about this is that the Earth is 360 degrees because it's a sphere and it takes 24 hours to rotate one time. So if you do the math, that's about 15 degrees per hour. This is, the, you gotta know this number. So now it says the stars appear to move through an arc of 120 degrees and they wanna know how many hours that is. Well, if it's 15 degrees per hour, all you gotta do is 120 divided by 15. And if you do that, you get 8. So that's how you do that. The only way to get this is to know that the Earth rotates 15 degrees per hour. Another thing to know is that this star in the middle right there, that is Polaris, because it does not move in, this, in the northern hemisphere, because it's on the Earth's axis. Going on, number six, a ship is at a location of 40 degrees south, 77 degrees west. That is a latitude and longitude. Notice the latitude comes first and the longitude comes second. So in terms of latitude and longitude, really quick, what you need to know is latitude looks like this. Longitude looks like this. Sort of like a pumpkin essentially, or you could see it as this, whichever one, they go up and down. Latitude, the maximum number of degrees latitude you can get is 90 degrees, and the maximum number of degrees longitude you can get is not 90 degrees, 180 degrees. Important lines of latitude, zero degrees is the equator, for uh, 180 degrees, that's the international date line. I'm just going to abbreviate it IDL. And zero degrees longitude is called the prime meridian. Latitude measures no degrees north and degrees south. And longitude measures degrees east and degrees west. And when you write latitude and longitude, you always are going to write it like this parentheses, a number, degrees north or degrees south, comma, a number, something degrees east or degrees west. The, the latitude comes first in the coordinate and the longitude comes second. So knowing that, go back to our question. A ship is at that location, 40 south, 77 west. They want to know about an ocean current and a transform or a type of boundary. So we're going to go to our ocean currents page first in our reference table. Now, this map is tricky because the prime meridian is here. Don't mind my crooked lines. That's the prime meridian. And the international date line is here. Here's the equator. 
So anywhere above this point here is the north. Anywhere below is the south. But to find east and west, east is anywhere east of the prime meridian here. So this is the eastern hemisphere, but it stops at 20 degrees and continues from this 20 degrees to this 180. So this is eastern hemisphere, which makes this side the western hemisphere. So let's go back to the question. It says 40 south, 77 west. So ready? 40 degrees south. So this is 0 degrees. Here's 20, 40, 60. So 40 degrees south is here. And then I already forgot. I think it was 77 degrees west. Okay. So that's here's 60 and here's 80. So 77 is right here. So you go down and sort of meet those spots. It looks like we're talking about the Peru current. And if you look down here, that is a cool current. So then you got to go to that exact same map on page 5 to get the boundary, which looks like we're right here, the Peru-Chile Trench. And that symbol is right here, which is convergent. So this map works the same. The prime meridian's here, which means this is east, this is east, here's the international date line, and this is west. So you got to be mindful of the hemispheres on that one. So it looks like cool and convergent. So D. A little test taking strategy that I like is if you cover all these answers up on your paper and then figure out the answer yourself and then see if that choice is one of them, that can make your life a little easier. All right, we're going on. Number seven, what time is it in Greenwich, England at zero longitude when it's noon in Messina, New York? So first of all, Greenwich, England, they told you was zero degrees longitude. So we're going to put a line with zero degrees and we're going to put a question mark because they want to know the time there. It's noon in Messina. We don't know where Messina is, but it's a location in New York, which means automatically it's definitely on page three in the reference table. So you go to page three, which is right here. And Messina, if you look at all the cities, and by the way, the cities are on the dots next to the name. They are not the actual word. So here's Messina, you could see, but the dot for Messina is right here. So what's the longitude of Messina? It's about 75 degrees. So it's about, it's actually 74 degrees and like 45 or 50 minutes west. So now that we know the longitude of Messina, we could say Messina is somewhere west of the prime meridian. So how far west? Well, about 75 degrees. So each line is going to be 15 degrees longitude. So here we go, 0, 15, 30, 45, 60, 75. Here's where Messina is. So somewhere here, they said it's noon, 12 p.m. in Messina. So what time is it in the prime meridian? Well, as you go east, time will increase by one hour per line. So this is going to be 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m., which means in Messina, I mean, in the prime meridian, it is 5 o'clock p.m. So it's as you go west, time will get less. And as you go east, time will increase. So that's how you remember that. The big thing to know is 15 degrees per one hour. 15 degrees per one hour. Okay, base your answers to the following question on the map below. Which two observers would be experience the same time. Anything to do with time, the answer is longitude. So which two of these people are on the same line of longitude, which are the lines that go up and down? So we got A and D have the same time, B and E have the same time, and C and no one. So B and E, is that an answer? Yes. Is A and D? No. Because if they put A and D as an answer, there would be two right answers. The other ones they put are B and C. But those are both on a line of latitude, so that's there to trick you. And D and E, again, they're both on a line of latitude. You want the ones that go up and down for the time. Going up. As a ship crosses the prime meridian, the altitude of Polaris is measured 50 degrees. What is the ship's location? So here's the big thing to know. The altitude of Polaris is equal to the latitude of the observer. Or of the person. So this person is seeing Polaris at 50 degrees, which means their latitude is 50 degrees north 
It cannot be south because we don't see Polaris in the south. So 50 degrees north is right here. I don't even have to finish the question because that's the only one is the answer. But the prime meridian is zero degrees of longitude. So C is the right answer. Number 10. New York State's highest peak, Mount Marcy, is located at approximately, approximately, what? So here you see minutes. Anything with minutes on it is going to be on page three on your reference table. There's no other spot that does it. So here we go. Find Mount Marcy, which is right here. And it looks like we're going to do latitudes first, 44 degrees and a little bit above that. So maybe 44 degrees and five minutes north, comma. And then for longitude, here's 73. Here's 74. It's before 74. So I like 73 degrees and maybe like 50 minutes west. So first of all, all everywhere on this map is north and west, no matter what. So let's see if there's any we can eliminate. So north and west, north and west. Oh, they're all north and west. Look at that. So we, don't, we can't do that. But the latitudes are going to be in the 40s. Because if you look, it only goes 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. Those are all the latitudes. So that's the first number. The first number has to be in the 40s so I can get rid of C and D. So 44, what did I say? 44 and 73, 44 and 73. Yeah, so B looks like I got the closest. Okay, um, this video is brought to you by, of course every YouTube video has to have a sponsor and advertiser. Um, if you draw on the top of your quiz on Tuesday, a circle or whenever day the quiz is, a circle with like an earth like this, that's an earth, and then you put a smiley face in the middle like this, I will give you plus one on your quiz. And that's for watching this video. So plus one if you draw a earth with a smiley face somewhere on the front of your quiz, uh, where your name is. Uh, don't tell your friends about this. Tell them to watch the video so they get the review. Okay, cool. And of course, there is a bonus Question number 11. Since Denver's longitude is 105 degrees west and Utica's longitude is 75 degrees west, sunrise in Denver occurs when? Okay, check this out. This is a tough question. So it looks like Denver is at 105 degrees west. So that's Denver. And then Utica is 75 degrees west. So check this out. Imagine, let's just say the sun rises at 6 a.m. So it says, let's say the sunrise at Utica at 6 in the morning, and the sun rises in Denver at 6 in the morning. Well, right now, Denver is at 105 degrees west. The time is less as we go here. So if it's 6 a.m. at 75, here's 90, and then 105. So there's one line of longitude between them, so 90 degrees. So here's 5 a.m. It's 4 a.m. in Denver. So if the sun rises at 6, the sunrise in Denver is going to occur two hours later than it is going to in Utica because Utica is more east. So that's a tricky question, but if you draw a picture, it sort of helps. So those are my top 10 plus one bonus questions that you got to know for Tuesday uh, or whenever the quiz is. Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to let me know or email me. I hope this was helpful, and good luck on the quiz. See you later.